morning. Today is December 6th. I hope you're having a blessed morning. Oh, it's, you know what? I'm in a valley. I'm just going to be straight up. I'm in a valley. I, I was recording like the first video and all of a sudden it's just like something come over me. I'm just like, oh, come on now, you know? Um, it's, it's just something. It's something. It's just something I got to get through, right? You know, a lot of time God, uh, you know, just has us work through things because, you know, we got to learn, right? You get to the other side, it's beautiful. Going through it, not so beautiful, right? But there's always, there's always um, words of knowledge and wisdom in it. Yes, there is. Okay, so we are going to finish the rest of this chapter. It is uh, 1 Corinthians um, chapter 7. We're on verse 25, and we're going to get through it. I think we're still talking about marriage and sex and all that other stuff. So, okay, let me just pray. Dear, dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, thank you, God, for your message. Thank you for your understanding, Lord Jesus. Thank you for being here, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for just your presence. Uh, your presence, Lord Jesus. Uh, thank you for that. God, I just ask that you bless everybody with that peace, too. Bless them with that peace, Lord Jesus, as they're watching this video. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God gave me like this abundant peace right there. It was just like, I felt like everything was just so much, and he just gave me this peace. I was like, thank you, Jesus. Be okay, number 25. Now, regarding your question about the young woman who are not yet married. Here we go. Let me turn this down because obviously I'm one of those. Okay. I do not have a command from the Lord for them, but the Lord in his mercy has given me wisdom that can be trusted and I will share it with you. I'm probably going to need a highlighter for this. Are you ready for the women that are not married? Because of the present crisis, I think it's best to remain as you are. If you have a wife, or let me see what it is. If you have a wife, do not seek to end the marriage. If you do not have a wife, do not seek to get married. But if you are, but if you do get married, it is not a sin. And if you are a young woman, and if a young woman gets married, it is not a sin. However, those who get married at this time will have troubles. And I am trying to spare you those problems. Okay, a lot to take in, right? Let me just figure this out. Let me let me ask God what he thinks about this here. Okay, let's see. Um, let's see. I'm going to come up to the Lord. So it's a crisis to them, right? So um, because God wants us to be united, right? He wants us to have a helpmate. That's why he made Adam and Eve, to have a helpmate, right? And the thing is, is that if I don't get married, it's not a sin. Right, but if I am out there doing things, you know what I'm talking about? That's a sin because you're not supposed to be just spreading your joy everywhere, you know what I mean? That's not even joy, it's like that, you know. And you're not even supposed to be spreading that everywhere, you're not supposed to be, it's supposed to be for one person, one person only, you know. That's why it's like saving yourself, you know what I mean? It's like you, it's something that God cherishes, like virginity is something God cherishes, right. You know, I'll never get that back, right? But being pure, as pure as I can, I I can do that. I can do that. As as pure as I can be, or try to be as pure as I can be for for God. Because that's what you want to do. And if God does give me a helpmate, then you know, I've been pure this whole time for him, right? You know, because that's what you want to do is you want to have a husband or a wife. You would it would be nice because we're humans and we need to um have that and then let's see however those who get married at this time will have troubles and i'm trying to spare you from these troubles okay so let's read on she's always going to tell us what's going on number 29 but let me say this dear brothers and sisters the time that remains is very short so from now on those with wives should not focus only on their marriage those who weep or who rejoice or who buy things should not be absorbed by their weeping or their joy or their possessions. Yes, you should not. Okay, we'll keep reading. 31. Those who use the things of the world should not become attached to them 
for this world as we know it will soon pass away. Highlighter time. Okay. So, number 31, this is it. Those who use the things of this world should not become attached to them. For this world, as we know it, will soon, soon pass away. Are you attached to your stuff? Like, you know, I am, I, I was just going through my things and like, just like, you know, if I give my girls just a little bit more treats, I'd probably have more treats, right? There's just stuff like that, like, you know what I mean? Just like budgeting and, um, you know, it's like, do I need this? Do I need, and when I go shopping, I'm like, do I need this? God, it's usually God telling me, do I need it? God's like, do you need that? Or is that a want? I'm like, okay, God. So, so a lot of times, yeah, don't be attached to things of this world. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Okay, number 32. I want you to be free from concerns of this life. You know, we went to, last night there was a group, Hidden Group, right? It's my church group. It's a women's group. It's called Hidden. And um, it's like giving God everything, right? There was, a, there was a scripture. I don't even know what I did with it. Anyway, there was, a, there was a scripture. But it was like laughing at like trouble and everything like that. Because, was it Proverbs Woman? Maybe Proverbs Woman. Because she knows that she can't control anything, not one single thing, because God controls it. So when like trouble or something comes, she just laughs, like, whatever, like you can't, God controls my life, right? That's how we need to be. And I'm saying that for myself too. That's how we need to be. Because when, when the enemy tries to attack, right? When the enemy wants to be like, oh no, you, this is, no, mm -mm, you're going to do this. It's like, you're supposed to laugh and be like, hi, you can't. I have Jesus. There's nothing you can do to me. Nothing. That's the faith we need to have. I have Jesus. There's nothing you can do to me. Nothing. How would you? No. Nope. You can't. You can try. When you try, you know what happens? God steps in and he gives you what you need. Right? Mm-hmm. Because God fights our battles. We don't fight them. God fights them. Right? So, Okay. I want to be I want to be free from the concerns of this life. An unmarried man can spend his time doing the Lord's work and thinking about how to please him. But a married man has to think about his earthly responsibilities and how to please his wife. He number 34, he his interests are divided. In the same way a woman who is no longer married or has never been married can be devoted to the Lord and the holy in body and spirit. So, I look at this like, okay, when we get married, you know, we have to, okay, so, oh, it's just invited. Okay, so when we get married, um, you have to give time to your husband, right, or wife, right? But a married woman has to think about her earthly responsibilities, how to please her husband. So, the women that are not married, like me, right? I could spend like two to four hours a day with God. I spend all day with him anyways. But, why can't you guys do it together, right? Why can't you? That's what I would, like, you know, I would still get up early and be like, you know, I, this is, God comes first. That's, what, that's how I feel. Like, before your husband, before your kids, before anything, God comes first. That, that's what I would do. But a married woman has to think about earthly responsibilities and how to please her husband. I am saying this for your benefit, not to pl place restrictions on you. I want you to do whatever will help you serve the Lord best. As for, as with, with as few distractions as possible. So he said it. Do whatever will serve the Lord best, right? But, number 36, but if a man thinks that he is treating his fiance improperly and will inevitably give in to his passion. Let him marry her as, as he wishes. It is not a sin. But if he has decided firmly not to marry and there is no urgency and he can control his passion, he does not, he does 
well not to marry. So the person who marries his fiance does well, and the person who doesn't marry is does even better. Okay. We're almost out of time. Hold on a second. A wife is bound to number thirty nine. A wife is bound to her husband as long as he lives. If a husband dies, she is free to marry anyone she wishes, but only if he loves the Lord. But in my opinion, it'd be better for her to stay single. And I think I am giving you counsel from the God spirit when I say this. To stay single, that's it. That's the bottom line. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <clears throat> but, okay, I'm going to break down this little sentence right here. It says that, Basically, if you're engaged and y'all are having fun and doing things together, it is better to get married, right? Because you don't want to be doing stuff out of wedlock. That's the thing. You don't want to be doing stuff out of wedlock, right? And if a wife's husband dies, then she's free to marry. Otherwise, you know, if there's a divorce, I don't think she can. And I think in the Bible, don't quote me on this, I think, the only way for divorce, biblically, is if there was infidelity, which means that they cheated. That's the only way, biblically. Um, a woman can divorce a man if he has cheated, they think. I think that's how it is. Um, but, but yeah, like, you know, the thing is about being single and being married is like, I think that you do need to be equally yoked you know i think it's easier on the marriage and sometimes you guys aren't you know sometimes you're not equally yoked and i also feel that you need to give more time to god and put him first in your marriage because when you put god first in your marriage your marriage is perfect it's like i mean it's not i don't think any marriage is perfect but it's very very good right when you give god all glory and give him the give him the front forefront right that's all good so i'm just gonna pray 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 you know just um oh dear heavenly father lord jesus i just thank you god thank you for your wisdom knowledge and understanding lord jesus i just pray over each over each and every um person watching this video lord jesus that you bless them today god and that their mind, their mind is um, pure, Lord Jesus. Their mind is pure. Their mind has peace, Lord Jesus. And whatever they're going through, God, I ask that you cast whatever they're going through, God. I just ask that you just sanctify it in your blood, Lord Jesus, and cover them in your blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mm. I love you guys. I love you so much. Have a blessed day. Just keep me in your prayers. Just keep me. I'm in the valley. Just keep me in your prayers. Love you.